Today we're looking at what I like to call a struggle verse. One of those verses that are just difficult to deal with, a challenging topic perhaps, something that makes some people feel uncomfortable, um, and it either gets avoided, given short shrift, or uh, due to the discomfort of uh, teachers, preachers, etc., um, gets skipped over altogether. Um, so this is an interesting one that's in Matthew chapter 19. Um, the Pharisees come to Jesus and try to trap him with a question about divorce. And he has a discourse with them about divorce and what has been written and Moses' allowance, etc. And that's in Matthew 19, 3 through 9. You may wish to pause the video <coughs> and read Matthew 19, 3 through 9. That's fine. I can wait. Welcome back. And uh, after that takes place, the disciples say to Jesus, if such is the case with a man and his wife, it is better not to marry. So after hearing this discussion between the Pharisees and Jesus, the followers of Jesus, his disciples, the Mephetes, say to him, wow, if that's the case um, for people like us, perhaps um, getting married is not such a great idea. It is better not to marry. Um, let's take a look at what Jesus says back to them in verse 11. And this is from the ESV. But he said to them, Not everyone can receive this saying, but only those to whom it is given. So he says, This saying, I'm about to tell you something, not the thing that just came before. He said that publicly to everyone. But this thing that he's about to only share with the disciples, he says, is not for everyone. Not everyone is uh, able to accept this thing that I'm about to tell you. Uh, only those to whom it is given. So let's take a look in Koine at what he said to them um, in, this, in this introduction. Upantes korusin ton logon tuton al hois dedotai. Let's break it down. Upantes, not everyone. Korusin. Um, this is a really interesting verb. Korusin is third person plural from koreo. It means I have room for, I accept, or I, I contain. This is a word that implies capacity. Um, not everyone has the capacity to accept ton logon tuton, this message, this word, this saying. Notice that tuton is bracketed. That's because it doesn't appear in all the manuscripts. The earlier manuscripts only have ton logon. Not everyone has the capacity to accept the message, the saying, um, but then later manuscripts have this uh, tuton, this message, um, and uh, so it's included in the text so that we can see the addition. And then he says, except for Allah, but rather hois dedotai, those to whom it has been given. So who are these people to whom it has been given? Um, the message, the is he saying that only those to whom it has been given, is it the message or is it the capacity to receive and accept the message? Um, that, that's an interesting question. Um, I suggest it's probably the message uh, because the message he's about to give them, which it'll be painfully clear, uh, is not relevant to everyone. Remember this, particularly if you're approaching the New Testament from a devotional standpoint, while it may all be inspired, it's not all equally relevant. Uh, it doesn't pertain to everyone to the same degree, uh, which, which I think you'll agree with when we look at this next verse, verse 12, uh, which we again read from the ESV. For there are eunuchs who have been, been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let the one who is able to receive this, receive it. So let me be the first one to say it. That's a lot of eunuch talk. So eunuch comes from eune, bed, and the verb echo. I hold, I have, I keep. 
a eunuch in an eastern kingdom where it was customary to have a harem was the chamberlain, literally the bed keeper, the bed guard for the harem. The harem master, the harem keeper, was a man who had been uh, rendered asexual through castration and or emasculation and was therefore trusted to manage the, uh, the king's harem. So a eunuch is a person who has been rendered asexual, who has been uh, either castrated or emasculated so that they are no longer uh, a threat uh, in regard to being a sexual predator of the opposite sex. Um, in Eastern kingdoms, there was also a cultic practice of eunuchs as priests, that a priest um, could fully dedicate himself to his duties, to his uh, service of a god or gods, because he wasn't distracted by the urges uh, related to procreation and marriage. So, <clears throat> let's bear that in mind. A eunuch is a man without the inclination and or ability to fully engage in marriage to a woman. Jesus in this verse refers to three types of eunuchs. In verse 12a, the first part, he says there are eunuchs who are eunuchs from their mother's womb. They were born either without the desire or the mechanical ability to fully marry. Uh, part B in verse 12, there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men. Something was done to them that eliminated that desire and or ability to fully marry. Whether that was done intentionally or uh, accidentally, there was something that happened to them, an outside influence that resulted in them becoming uh, what Jesus calls eunuchs, uh, unable to go forth, go forth into marriage. Then there's the last part, the most significant part for our purposes in response to what the disciples said to Jesus. Those who have made themselves eunuchs, but not just uh, that, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let's take a look at that phrase in Koine. Kaisen eunuchoi hoitines, eunuchisen heautos. So for the first part of the verse, and there are eunuchs such as those who made themselves eunuchs. So there are people who weren't born that way, who didn't have an outside influence that made them eunuchs, but there are people who chose to become eunuchs. And then we get the last part, diatain basilein to ton huronon. Uh, for the sake of, or on account of, or because of the kingdom of heaven. So uh, as a result of their affiliation with the kingdom of heaven, whether the requirements of, or a desire to serve, or a desire to enter, he doesn't specify, related to their, um, their connection to the kingdom of heaven, they made a decision to make themselves eunuchs. Is Jesus advocating, or at least acknowledging, people emasculating or castrating themselves? Well, that's a great question and it's important. Castration is prohibited in the Old Testament. Uh, within Judaism, castration is not a thing, okay? Uh, why is that? because it's a disintegration of the created order. In creation, God says, uh, go forth and multiply. Uh, God says, it's, we're told of creation, God spoke the word and brought forth the, uh, the beasts of the field, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and they multiplied. Every living thing in the created order uh, has uh, an inherent a drive to reproduce itself. Reproduction is a part of creation. And so castration is a disintegration of a, of a creature from that created order. So it's not a part of Old Testament teaching, okay? In fact, it's considered a grave offense if, uh, if someone is accidentally, uh, has their reproductive abilities destroyed. 
right? Uh, if a cow kicks a man and results in him becoming a eunuch, uh, the cow is put to death, right? I mean, this is serious business. You're undoing the created order. So Jesus cannot be saying when he says people have chosen to make themselves to, into eunuchs on account of or for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, he's, he's, he, he should follow that with a condemnation to be consistent with the Old Testament. Or he doesn't mean literal castration or emasculation. He means a metaphorical making of oneself into a eunuch. It's setting aside the, the, uh, the desire and drive to, to marry to enter into the sexual procreative union um, for the sake of the kingdom, either to allow one to focus on the sake of the kingdom, or perhaps one's drive is such that it's in conflict with the kingdom of heaven, and one has to say, I'm going to set that aside in favor of the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Paul writes about this subject and says, uh, if I could, I would wish for all of you who are trying to be servants to be like me and stay single. But then he says, it's better to marry than to burn. If the desire, if the drive, if this natural impulse in you is so strong that it's interfering with your ability to uh, live in the kingdom and or to serve, it's better for you to marry than to burn. Right. So uh, at the time of the New Testament in Judea, in Judaism, it's important to recognize that this issue is almost exclusively a male issue. Uh, the, the notion of unmarried women is an oddity. Uh, we've spoken in the past about widows, right? And how uh, being, being widowed early in life uh, could practically be a death sentence and how important it was for that widow to be able to remarry so that she has support and protection and care. Um, for a man to remain unmarried is not the end of the world, uh, but, but the notion of unmarried women is unusual in that time and place. Now, let's go back to our word eunuch. Uh, here, in this case, uh, eunuchos, eunuchoi in the plural. There is a feminine form of the word, eunuchia, but that feminine form of the word simply means an unmarried person, just someone who has not yet married. Um, now, let's get back to our text and look at the last part where, of what Jesus said. Uh, Hodunamonos korein korato. The one who is able, the one who has the ability or the power to accept, to receive, co-reign from, from the same phrase that he started out with. The one who has the capacity to accept this, the power and the room in them to receive this, koreto, let him receive it. So let the one who is able to receive this, receive it. This brings us to the point of the text, uh, or the point of why I'm focusing on the text this week, there are parts of scripture that aren't for you, um, but are for some other people. And for those people, they can be incredibly difficult to, to hear and to receive because they put a challenge in their lives, right? So if this is relevant to you, the, there's a twofold question that Jesus um, poses at the beginning and at the end of this statement about being a eunuch. Um, do you have the capacity to receive this? And then if the qu answer to that question of yes is yes, then he says, are you ready then to go ahead and accept it? Because it may bring a challenge into your life. Whether you were born a eunuch, someone who's not uh, open to marriage, whether something happened to you in your life that resulted in that, um, or whether you've looked at your life and your relation to the kingdom and have said to yourself, for me to be in the kingdom or to serve it as well as possible, perhaps as the disciples suggested, it could be better for me not to marry. If that message is for you and if you have that capacity to receive that, if you're hearing it, um, then Jesus says, receive it. If you have the capacity, if it speaks to you in where you are, receive that message. But it's not a message for everyone. 
And Jesus himself said, it's not a message that everyone has the capacity to receive. Is, should we add a yet to that? Maybe we should add a yet to that. But Jesus didn't. Do with that what you will. Okay, a struggle text. A text that is inspired, like all the rest, uh, but not necessarily equally relevant. May, it may not apply to you. Uh, I've been happily married for 32 years. Uh, I can't conceive not being married. Um, and surely Jesus is not suggesting that divorce is on the table uh, for his disciples as a means of being a better servant. Uh, you, you can't get that if you just read verses 3 through 9. Uh, uh, right? And then, and so that, or three through 10, pardon me. Then we get to, uh, to the rest of it and just have to recognize that what is for us, what we do have the capacity to receive, what is relevant to us when it comes to us, uh, Jesus closes with, if you have the power, if you have the, the ability, if you have the capacity to receive the difficult message that is relevant to you, receive it. Hope that was good for you. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, Kars Kai, Reina Humine, grace and peace to you.